The final full week of the Trump administration is beginning with new impeachment charges. Over the president's influence on last week's storming of the U.S. Capitol by a mob of his supporters. A new poll from Quinnipiac University finds that 56 percent of respondents say they hold President Trump responsible for the storming of the Capitol. Slim majorities say he should either resign as president or be removed from office. At least 210 lawmakers are endorsing one article of impeachment to charge Mr. Trump Trump with incitement of insurrection. The article is likely to go to a vote as early as Tuesday. Before bringing up any charges, the House will vote on a resolution demanding Vice President Mike Pence convene the cabinet to invoke the 25th Amendment. Doing so would temporarily remove the president's powers, potentially through the end of his term. Republicans blocked the move from being considered with unanimous consent. If Pence does not do so, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says Congress will move forward with impeachment. Last night on 60 Minutes, Speaker Pelosi showed Leslie Stahl the damage Trump supporters caused in the Capitol and in her office, while her staff was barricaded in a room and hiding from them. She explained why she'd rather see the 25th Amendment invoked. There is a possibility that after all of this, there's no punishment, no consequence, and he could run again for president. And that's one of the motivations that people have for advocating for impeachment. Won't that take more than the 10 days? I mean, does it actually make sense? Well, I like the 25th Amendment because it gets rid of him. He's out of office. Uh, but there is strong support in the Congress uh, for impeaching the president a second time. This president is guilty of inciting insurre insurrection. Uh, he has to pay a price for that. So far, at least 19 people have been charged with federal crimes relating to the assault, including two men who authorities say were photographed carrying plastic zip ties, which can be used as handcuffs. At least 40 others were charged in the D.C. Superior Court. The focus in Washington remains on the Capitol assault, while the deadly pandemic continues to devastate lives across the country. More than 22,000 people died from the virus last week, a record for the second week in a row. Eleven states are suffering a record number of COVID-19 deaths. In Los Angeles, the virus is killing an average of 200 people per day. That is more than every other cause of death combined. Nancy Cordes and Meredith McGraw join me now. Nancy is CBS News chief congressional correspondent, and Meredith is a White House reporter for Politico. Welcome, Nancy. Since lawmakers went into lockdown last Wednesday, at least one representative, New Jersey Democrat Bonnie Watson Coleman, has tested positive for COVID-19. Who is she blaming? Well, she's blaming House Republicans. In fact, in her announcement of her positive test results, she said that she contracted the virus after uh, being huddled in a safe room with lawmakers, fellow lawmakers who had not been wearing masks. And by now, of course, we have all seen the video of one of her colleagues, Democrat Lisa Blunt Rochester of Delaware, right there, trying to hand out masks to Republicans, a group of them who were there in the room with them for hours. They couldn't go anywhere. Uh, and those Republicans refused to don masks. And that led uh, the attending physician of the U.S. Capitol to warn over the weekend that there was a high chance that staffers and lawmakers who were kept in big groups like this inside for hours on Wednesday could be at higher risk of contracting coronavirus. And now we know of the first instance of it. Well, Meredith, before we dig into the push for removal, let's look at how President Trump is spending his final days in office. We see a rush to restrict asylum, a designation of rebels in Yemen as terrorists, and the Cuban government uh, as a state sponsor of terrorism, but also, as you call it in your reporting, a ceremonial victory lap, making last-minute use of his presidential powers. What else is in the works? Well, President Trump is really proceeding uh, business as usual over at the White House, although he is keeping uh, a more quiet presence now that he's been banned from Twitter. It's something that uh, we were told the president was ballistic about. And, of course, the, the White House now, we've heard, is, is considering actions against big tech um, in retaliation against that. But this week, the president really is doing a lot of ceremonial things. Uh, he is handing out awards to allies like 
uh, Congressman Jim, uh, Jim Jordan, uh, later this week, we reported that uh, he's going to be giving a Medal of, Hon a medal of uh, Freedom to uh, New England Patriots head coach Bill Belichick, and he's gotten some backlash from that, so it's unclear if he will uh, show up for that. The, pa the Patriots still haven't gotten back to us. And then he's going down to the border tomorrow, um, where he is expected to tout um, all of the, the construction of the border wall. And this week was supposed to be a chance for him to kind of tie a bow around a lot of his administration's moves, but um, he hasn't interacted with the press. And right now it's unclear that we are going to be hearing from him again um, anytime soon. So, Nancy, is there actually enough congressional support to remove the president from office? And what kind of timeline are they working under? Well, the House Democrats who have been spearheading this process tell me there is now enough support to pass both this resolution on the 25th Amendment and the impeachment resolution. They've got something like 210 co-sponsors of the House re impeachment resolution. They need 218 votes. They tell me that there are a number of Democrats who are going to vote for it. They just didn't want to put their names on it. And then there's always the possibility that a group of Republicans will join them as well. So it's really not a question of whether these resolutions are going to pass. The bigger question is what happens next. How quickly does the House send this article of impeachment over to the Senate? Does it do so right away as, you know, more and more House Democratic leaders appear to be leaning? And how quickly does the Senate take it up? How long does a trial last? Will the trial still be underway as President-elect Biden takes office? Just imagine what a uh, bizarre circumstance that will be if on the very day that President-elect Biden is being sworn in, the Senate is, is either in the midst of, of or gearing up for a, a trial over the acts of the previous president. But that's exactly what we're looking at right now. Well, Nancy, I want to ask you about information we are just learning, that acting uh, Secre DHS Secretary Chad Wolf is resigning. What can you tell us about his tenure? Well, that's a really interesting piece of news, Elaine, because national security advisors in the administration, those who deal day to day with the security of this country, had made it pretty clear as recently as today that they were going to remain on the job until January 20th. That while uh, other cabinet secretaries throughout the uh, administration were leaving, that they were going to stay on the job. So this abrupt announcement does come as something of a surprise. Keep in mind, uh, though, Chad Wolf never was confirmed for his position. The president nominated him a couple of times, but for a variety of procedural reasons, the Senate never ended up considering it and putting it to a vote. So he is the acting uh, head of DHS, and now uh, he's departing earlier than expected, and it's pretty likely that there is a story behind that. Yeah, we'll wait to hear more details on that. In the meantime, Meredith, one source close to the vice president tells CBS News that while Mike Pence and his family were in a bunker at the Capitol, President Trump did not reach out to check on the vice president's safety, nor did the president condemn the rioters who said the VP should be executed. Do we know what level of support there is from Vice President Pence and the cabinet for invoking the 25th Amendment? Don't hold your breath on Vice President Pence um, invoking the 25th Amendment here. It would really be um, an extraordinary move for him right to now. do Call so. Right and back. so far, um, he hasn't voiced any sort of public support for this. And then, of course, he would need the support of the, the cabinet itself with Chad Wolf uh, stepping down. And then we also saw Transportation Secretary Elaine Chow, in addition to Education Secretary Betsy DeVos, step down. Um, it, it just seems increasingly unlikely that that is something that is going to happen. Um, and we learned that, that Betsy DeVos, she resigned after she had an understanding that uh, Pence had no intention of invoking the 25th Amendment. Um, but, uh, you know, the president is, is only in office for another nine days. I think uh, the vice president is, is really more interested in um, keeping a, a low pro profile here. Um, we've been told by his aides not to um, expect to see him ruffle feathers in any sort of major way this week. And, of course, he's also going to be going to the inauguration of uh, Vice President or President-elect 
um, Joe Biden next week. So speaking of which, Meredith, after last week's security breakdown at the Capitol, Washington, D.C.'s mayor is urging people not to come to the city for inauguration. Now, there are reports of a planned million militia march for Inauguration Day, January 20th. And I want to play a clip from President-elect Biden on whether he is concerned about being sworn in. Let's listen. I'm not afraid of taking the oath outside, and we've been getting briefed, but I am uh, I think it's critically important that there be a real serious focus on holding those folks who engage in sedition and threaten people's lives, deface public property, cause great damage, that they be held accountable. And uh, I think that's a view that is held by the vast majority of Democrats and Republicans in the Congress. Meredith, what do we know about the security preparations being put in place? Well, security is going to be a top priority, especially after everything that we saw unfold last week. Um, there are a lot of questions around how things were handled and the coordination um, between different um, law enforcement groups um, that led to a lot of weaknesses um, up there on, on Capitol Hill when those riots were taking place. Um, earlier today, Chad Wolf, um, he did bump up um, the, the security timeline for the inauguration by a day, and there are going to be additional measures um, in place just to make sure that um, everything is, is kept safe and um, everybody is on high alert, especially after just the, the horrific images and videos and, and everything that occurred this last week. You know, and Meredith, very quickly here, I mean, I just want to get your take on the timing of this announcement by Chad Wolf that I asked Nancy about a moment ago. Given the sensitivity of what is ahead in the nation's capital and given what just took place, I think there are going to be a lot of questions about uh, the situation behind the scenes with respect to the security operation. Um, do we know at this point uh, with respect to how this is all coordinated, because the inauguration is a federal event, uh, this, in fact, is under the purview directly of DHS, is it not? Well, you're right on that. And Chad Wolf, uh, last week, Secretary Wolf said that he had no plans to step down. Um, so I'm still not read in on the exact circumstances since it, it did just happen. But there are mm -hmm. going to be a lot of questions about why he decided exactly at this moment when, you know, there are just days to go and um, his job is so critical um, to making sure, um, you know, everything runs smoothly and there, there is um, adequate coordination um, between all of the different different agencies to make sure that that security is as is, is tight as it can be this next week. All right. More details to come, no doubt. Nancy Cordes and Meredith McGraw, thank you both very much. You're welcome.